boy, there's an old relic right there. Of <laughs> Michael Kadir jersey. Wow. I didn't know they made those anymore. Brought it out of mothballs here today. <laughs> Michael, great to see you. You look great. You look like you could still be playing, but of course, you announced your retirement. Uh, how's it feel to be back in Minnesota? Well, I, I can't tell you how good it feels to be back. The first time since the, my last game here that I've been back. Right. I was telling a story. This is the only team. Because I was hurt when you guys came to Colorado. It's right. the only team I don't have an at bat against in the big leagues. And is I think, that right? I think that is very fitting because I will never, I will always see it as home, never as an opponent. opponent. So to, to not have an at bat against the Twins is fitting for me. Well, now we're playing the Mets later this year. You could come out of retirement just <laughs> no. for that series. <laughs> That's like the, one of the last ones of the year. Yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. Could be big implications in that series. I well, asked you when I first saw you, how do you like retirement? I love it. I do. It, it was time for me. You know, I think one thing that I really took pride in through my career is I was I was a good self evaluator. Um, it's why I didn't have egos when they asked me to switch positions and things of that nature. But it came to the point where it was time for me to call it to quits. The center one away. And I couldn't be happier. I get to spend time with my family. Um, today or this year I was the opening day starter on my son's coach pitch team which was nice and uh, first time in my career I was able to start knock him down did you I didn't my ERA for it's a good thing my ERA is like a 54 right now which is what you want to be for, for coach pitch so it's uh, it's been great it's been really fun Claudia and the kids are I like to think they're they're happy to have daddy home. Now you're here for the Twins Community Fund, something that you took a lot of pride in over your career and your time here. No doubt. And I think the Community Fund, something that I really took a lot of pride in was building relationships throughout the course of, of my career and whatever city I was playing in, but particularly here in Minneapolis and Minnesota because of how long I spent here and how involved the Community Fund is with the with the community. And, and because of that, when, when Brian Donaldson sent me the invite, I think to his surprise I said yes and I would love to come and and here we are today and, and what a great tribute to a great uh, organization. Now you've been with the Twins you went with the Rockies and then the Mets I believe those are the mm -hmm. three teams you played for you won a batting title congratulations. Thank you for the uh, Rockies one yes. year and uh, of the three teams the difference between say I know you came up in this organization but the difference between those three ball clubs. Well you know it's still all just it's Major League Baseball but I think the one thing that that and this is not a knock on both in either Colorado or New York the one thing that that Minnesota does separate themselves a little more is how integrated in the community they are. They really take a lot of pride the players take a lot of pride in their own charities and their own events whether it be fishing tournaments or waiter events or golf tournaments they really take a and, and the, the players rally around their teammates for those causes and I think that stems from the community embracing the, the team and embracing the organization the way that that this area does and twins territory does embrace the Minnesota Twins see the twins community fund is a donated almost 15 million dollars since 1991 and uh, they've done a Good job expanding the reach of baseball. When you say the community, it expands, as Twins you know, North South Dakota, Iowa, Wisconsin, and, and so it, it's a very worthwhile endeavor. I like, I like the second one there, the youth clinics. You know, baseball is really trying to get the youth involved back in baseball, not only at ballparks, but just back on the field playing the game of baseball. And uh, I, I like to see what the Twins are doing there. Absolutely, and any type of thing that, that the Twins can do to revive baseball, they're jumping on those opportunities, and it stems from directly from the community fund and those board of directors that come up with the ideas to in how to enhance baseball in the area. You just announced your retirement. Torrey Hunter announced his retirement. Latroy Hawkins announced <laughs> his retirement. Uh, let's see, AJ still out there, AJ. and David Ortiz is still out there. But it's remarkable to think of that group of players that that uh, you know you guys uh, were in in the turn of the century in, in that era started winning championships but individually mm -hmm. well, a, an extended run of some really great baseball careers. and I think what you just said the extended run is what speaks out to most people I know talking to people with throughout the or industry throughout my career they marvel at the fact that all of these players that you just mentioned as the ball goes into left field. Um, we're able to play 12 13 15 17 20 years in the major leagues and I think that's a direct correlation with 
the player development with the Minnesota Twins and bringing these guys up and teaching them the right way to play the game and not just the right way to play the game but the right way to be a professional because we know in, in this industry as long as you're a professional you can find spots to play at but the impact that these guys made that you just mentioned have been unparalleled throughout all of Major League Baseball. I have a theory about that. Okay. Um, you were part of the group. You got a handful of at-bats in 2001, and then we didn't know if there were even going to be Minnesota Twins in 2002. And I like to think that that there was enough vinegar <laughs> on the roster at that time to kind of have a rebellious attitude. A and, little and punching against the ropes. Yes, yeah. yes. I, and, and, and you guys came back, won the division, almost got to the World Series, and I think individually that helps explain why you had a roster with so many long careers in it. Well, there definitely was a lot of grit on those teams. There definitely was a lot of a lot of fight in those guys. And I think I agree with you. You put those guys in a collective group and you have a sustained amount of winning, which we were able to do. And then when all those guys disperse into their, the rest of their individual careers, whether it be wherever they were playing, I think you're right. It could explain a lot to why guys were able to play for so long at the level. That, that they played and, and had the sus sustained success that those players were able to have. And, and it comes from maybe that year or just that breed, a group of guys that were able to come up. Nice pick by Maurer at yeah. first base on a speedy runner, Perez scampering down the line. And a nice play by Nunez. You're looking for a double play ball. Nunez right in the middle of the. And short has to come hustling in, getting it on that little short hop and then on the run. Even though the throw was low, Joe picking it right there for the second out. Both runners advance. So two outs, runners at second and third. And Giavatella will be the batter and a big at bat for Kyle Gibson. I think a lot of fans want to know that you're retired. I know you're you're the little league coach and pitching and you've got a high <laughs> ERA, you gotta work on that. But yeah. What's next for Michael Kadir? You know, I, I think I'm happy right now for there not being a next. Um, I'm happy right now being with the family, at least in the near future. You know, I, I turned down the last year of my contract to be with the family, um, to spend more time. And I ad admire you for that. Well, thank you. And and you know, I, I think for this immediate future, that that is what's in our plan. It's a, you know, we just got finished taking the first spring break that I've ever had in, or had in 25 years went to the Bahamas so things like that that we never have been able to experience as a family we're going to knock those out at least for a little bit and then whatever happens in the future is going to take care of itself and happen but right now we're really excited to uh, to be a family go to little league practices take my daughter's ice skating take them to school and uh, hopefully sprinkle in a little more weekends like this this has been great too well, you've always been a great person I know you're a great papa too uh, we try to be I, sometimes you ask my kid on the on, a particular day they may disagree with you but uh, I like to think I am <laughs> Gibson trying to pitch out of this jam he's got the number nine hitter behind in the count 0 and 2 you still following the twins absolutely I followed them ever ever since I left I would always watch the games I'd always watch you guys on TV whether you know whatever wherever city I was on and um, you know, my son still watches them still has fond memories of his you know, first three years being here so it always is a piece of my heart and always will be and hopefully will, will be for for a long time. Mike I know that uh, we play the Mets later on my goodness their starting staff going to be tough. It is I mean they every single one of them and it's not just the stuff that they have the mentality that they carry with them. On the road. Big strikeout for Gibson. Stranded Trout at second base in the third strands two more men in scoring position in the fourth. More with Michael Kadire in a moment. <laughs> 